All right, so tetrad analysis. Let's kind of dive into the things that we need to know. Obviously, there's ordered and then there's unordered tetrads. You could say the same for octads. It doesn't really matter. But when we're looking at each of these, there's specific things that we're looking for. If we're going into a ordered tetrad, what we're looking at predominantly is a one factor cross. One factor cross for ordered tetrads. Go ahead and draw that there. And what we can derive from this one factor cross in a tetrad is the centromere, centromere gene distance distance. So what equation can we use for this? Well, let's switch colors to a brighter color. The equation that we use to determine this, obviously it's all in map units, is we take, and there's other ways that you can represent this, but there's one half times m2, the second division, second meiosis, uh, or second, yeah, second division, second division, divided by essentially the total, but I'm going to represent it as m1 plus, plus, it's kind of hard to write with this pen, m2. So we take that whole thing, and then you're going to do what you always do. You're going to times it by 100 to get it into centimorgans, or to get it into a percentage there. And that's all you have to do for a one-factor cross to find the centromere gene distance. So I guess if I just kind of I guess elaborate on this. So M2 and M1. So M2, M1 is this, the first segregation. And then I'll do it in white. M2 is the second segregation, thus giving us a four tetrad. Now, some notes that we want to make on this, some things that I would like to mention is that when you're talking about an ordered tetrad, it has a 33% maximum recombination frequency. When we're putting it into our test tube, whenever we're trying to analyze it, uh, there's uh, lots of mechanisms behind it. This is just a generalized overview. We'll go into detail later. Now, for an unordered tetrad, though, unordered, that's supposed to be like a circle, I guess. If this is a one-factor cross, then, well, as you might have guessed, we're doing a two-factor cross. So if we have a two-factor cross, there's, there's things that we can derive from that, or I guess hypotheses that we can make, whether or not the genes are... And this is kind of going back to unit one, whether or not they're linked or whether or not they follow independent assortment. Obviously, you can derive this based off of the same thing. The whole 50 map units thing is the thing. So obviously, if we were testing this, then the, if we're testing this hypothesis here, then the maximum recombination frequency is 50%. You can't get anything bigger than that. So you can't have a genes any further out than that. So let's talk about how we can calculate this. And there's really just two ways that we can get our, I'm just going to say map distance. Or there's not necessarily two ways. There's two techniques that we can use. Splitting these bad boys off. There's ones that are very, when the genes are very short or very close together. Short slash close together or whenever they're really long slash far apart. So remember, two-factor cross. And I shall switch. When the genes are really short or really, uh, I guess you could say, close together, the equation that we use is that map distance is equal to the non-parental die type plus one-half times, that's a plus sign by the way, times the tetra type. 
divided by the total. And that's what you do when they're really close together. Um, so if they're longer or further apart, then obviously that we have to account for double crossovers. And so when you want to account for double crossovers, the equation that you're going to use is the, I'm just going to say the tetratype, and we'll define these terms later, plus, put that in parentheses, 6 times the non-parental die type divided by your total times point five, and then you're going to take this whole thing here, I can make room for it, you take this whole thing and you multiply that by 100%. So, just to reiterate, tetrad analysis, ordered, unordered, Ordered is a one factor, unordered is a two factor. We have a maximum because it's a one factor of 33% recombination frequency. Because it's unordered and it's a two factor, we have a maximum recombination frequency of 50%. This can give us linked or independent assortment. And by doing that, we can determine the map distances. If the map distances of the two genes are short or very close together, we use this equation, which is non-parental die type plus one half times the tetratype divided by the total. Or if they're very, very far apart from each other, we have to account for double crossovers. So we take the tetratype plus six times the non-parental die type divided by the total times 0.5 times 100% to get it into map units. So, and this is of course in tetrad analysis, still talking about that. There's single crossovers and then there's double crossovers. But let's just talk about the things that we can get from a single crossover. The only thing that you can get from a single crossover, at least unambiguously, is something called a tetratype. Okay, so what is a tetratype, or what is the result of a tetratype? This is where you have two out of the four in your tetrad are recombinant, so you get a 50%, give or take. Two out of four there, so we have two that are recombinant, two that are Parental. Okay, so now let's talk about double crossovers, and I'll do it in this oddly purple color. Okay, so double crossovers, there's actually three distinct things that we can get from a double crossover. The first thing that we can get is a parental die type, a double crossover between the same. chromosomes, which that should make sense to you. If I have a double crossover, you, you would get the parental. You wouldn't even know that it's that you had it. That's why a lot of double crossovers go unseen. Three chromatid crossover. Now, obviously the arrangements of this can give us certain types of things, but what this is going to give us is the same thing as over here. So we have Two out of the four are recombinant, a 50% sort of recombination. Um, but remember, we 50% we, recombination, but because of this uh, crossover here, we have a couple of them. It's between three chromatids, so obviously one of these is going to be, it's actually three-fourths, but the thing is that one out of those four is the parental phenotype. So I'm just going to say it like that, parental. There. So for non-parental dye type, Non-parental means that there's no parentals, right? So we have a double crossover or crossing over taking place at all four chromatids. And what this can give us, at least from a standpoint of definition, is four out of four will be recombinant.